So hello and welcome to another Vardim webinar. Today we'll be talking about Swing, Vardim and how those two may go together. I'm your host, Mikael Sukoinen, and today I'm joined by two migration experts. We have Ben Wilson and Danielle Pizzagalli. Now, Ben has overseen a lot of migration projects over the years, and Danielle is the lead developer behind our new SwingKit product. Uh, so first of all, I'd like to show a few housekeeping rules. Um, all the lines are muted. What this means is that the chat is closed. However, if you navigate to the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, uh, you'll see a questions tab where you can ask questions. And don't worry if we don't answer them straight away, because we have reserved some time at the end uh, to answer those questions. Um, I can see a lot of you made it, but if you didn't, we record this webinar and we send it to everyone who signed up. If you're watching the recording, welcome. And on today's agenda, we'll be talking about Vardin and how you can use Vardin to modernize your Swing applications. Then we'll demonstrate our new Swing kit and finally answer those questions that you may have. Uh, I think without further ado, I'll let the experts do the talking. So Ben, please go ahead. Okay, thanks, Michael. So if you're unfamiliar with Vardin, I'll say a few words of introduction. So what is Vardin? Well, Vardin is a company that builds two frameworks for building web applications using Java. The two frameworks are called Flow and Hilla. Vardin also develops a set of over 45 visual components that implement the latest web component specification and work natively in all modern browsers. You can use these 45 components with Flow or Hilla equally well. Both the web components and the Flow and Hilla frameworks are open source, licensed under Apache 2, which gives you great freedom to build and market your own software products built with Java. The company Vaden has been active since the year 2000. So we mentioned the Flow and Hilla frameworks. Flow is the framework that will be more intuitive for Swing developers to be quickly productive developing web applications. And here you see a short example of what coding in Flow looks like. As you can see, like Swing, you're writing the UI of the web application in Java and like Swing, it's object-oriented, component-based, event-driven, and also fully compatible with the MVC, MVP, and the other application patterns you might be using today in Swing. For years now, Swing developers have been interested in Vaden Flow, not just to develop new web applications, but also to migrate existing Swing applications to web. These Swing developers often come to Vaden wondering about best practices for modernizing their application. And Vaden offers many modernization solutions for Java Swing. The first solution we offer is assessments, migration assessments, when experts from Vaden will analyze a Swing application in its entirety and quantify the challenges to transform it to web applications. Assessments are normally a data gathering exercise you do before you plan your project. Speaking of planning, next is planning, where we look beyond the impact of the modernization on the application and examine the impact on the organization. So the impact of the modernization on your developers and your users. In planning, Vaden experts take our knowledge of the modernization projects in our community and the lessons learned, and we apply this knowledge to optimize the plans you have for your modernization. This is a solution Vaden offers called green light. Next, we have the proof of concept. So in a proof of concept, we go deeper and try to demonstrate the viability of a non-functional aspect of our modernization, like performance or scalability or maintainability. 
These all make good proof of concepts. Then we have transformation, where we accelerate a swing modernization project by unlocking the value of the existing application and trying to leverage the code that exists and works today. Next, we have design. So Vaden has a team of professional designers who are skilled in optimizing the usability of a Swing application to create a modern experience for web. And finally, we have coexistence, where we make it possible to combine Swing desktop and Vaden web technologies into a seamless single experience for users. This helps make it possible to migrate with a phased approach, or if you need to rush web-based innovation to the users of a Swing application. Each Swing application is unique and will have unique challenges in modernization. So the six solutions we looked at are typically very customized. But all Swing applications are also the same in some technical ways. So there's also an opportunity to use automation, even if it's just a little bit. The areas where Vaden has developed automation fall into three pillars. We have assessments, coexistence, and transformation. And today, we will be focusing on the coexistence part we would like to introduce a new tool we have developed called Swing Kit. So Swing Kit is the Vaden tool to achieve coexistence of Vaden web inside a Swing desktop application. The main benefit is that it can make it easier for you to start your modernization project. If you don't have a tool like Swing Kit, you will have a much larger project you will have to propose to your executive management and secure the budget for before you can even get started. You're going to have to build a business case around your project that your executives can review and approve. With a coexistence solution like Swing Kit, you can be agile and avoid these preparations and approvals and immediately get started adding new features to your application with a modern look and feel. And with that, I will turn the presentation over to my colleague, Daniele, who will take us through the technology and process of using SwingKit. Thank you, Ben. Let me share. Perfect. So um, usually uh, when you have to um, migrate a very huge application that can be overwhelming like any other uh, plan that uh, has not a really uh, well-defined roadmap. So to avoid being overwhelmed, uh, it's very important to um, split your task into smaller ones that can be tested and completed and can be um, assessed uh, step by step. Uh, to do that, uh, in our use case, it's very important, first of all, to be aware of your level of isolation between UI and business logic. This is because it's very important to understand which part of your code needs to be migrated and which one can be reused uh, since the code uh, has, uh, has a lot of value and um, it's very important to uh, focus on the element that should be migrated and then uh, understand that um, your application can be actually splitted by use cases. So um, after the first uh, use cases has been migrated, uh, this is possible uh, to test the use case in the new technology and reiterate it uh, while um, uh, proceeding with the migration. So uh, the, the focus here is to hunt uh, the perfect use case. So um, the Pareto principle uh, is pretty common and it says that roughly 80% of uh, consequences come from 20% of the causes. This means that your application may have many uh, views or panels using Swing terminology, uh, but it's very common that uh, in your application, 
most of your users usually use uh, lesser than the whole application itself when they want to focus on specific use cases. So uh, doing the migration, uh, it's best to hunt the perfect use case that is going to be our, uh, we can say, first example. And uh, usually this, this is very uh, common during migrations, not only from Zwing to Vadin, but we can see that, um, for example, in, in everyday life, when we use uh, a native application on your phone uh, that has been uh, migrated from web. So, for example, when you try to do something uh, uncommon, like uh, cancel a, a subscription or um, request a refund or something like that, you usually are brought uh, to the web version uh, because that has not been migrated yet. This is very common, and you can apply that in your use case too from Swing to Vadim. So if you're able to migrate first a specific use case that is very common, what you will get is that um, it greatly reduces the complexity of the global analysis uh, because you focus only on a smaller uh, use case and you get quicker results. So your users can start using the new technology very quickly. Risks can be identified um, as soon as possible and the company learn how to do it. So you can reiterate it and your internal processes get uh, used to that. So after the first use case is being migrated, um, this can be reiterated again. And in this way, uh, instead of uh, looking at the whole uh, process as a whole, that can takes months or even years for very huge applications, uh, you can look at simple path that you can that the user can take and migrate those instead. Uh, to do that, um, you can add, use many technologies, uh, but it's very important to understand that a coexist solution uh, is, is key to this process. So the Swing Kit uh, is a solution uh, that uh, we as Vadin developed that allows you to migrate just with one view. So if you have thousands of views, you can just focus on one and try uh, your migration and uh, understand how it works. So why the Zwing Kit? Uh, this is because uh, usually risks can be identified uh, later in your application, and it's very hard to predict them until everything is finished. Uh, but if you're able to migrate one single element of your application first, those are going to be easy to identify. And uh, um, how the Zwing Kit works. So uh, the Zwing Kit uh, uses embedded browser technologies. Embedded browser technologies uh, can replace Zwing panels with Vadin view, just opening uh, your uh, browser inside Zwing. Uh, but the Zwing kit is not mm, just a browser uh, embedding technology, is everything that is around it, because the Zwing kit uh, takes uh, a great advantage from the same language between Vadin and Zwing and the same structure they have. So the Zwing kit allows you to uh, handle events coming from Vadin directly from Zwing and to uh, call uh, Java methods inside your Vadin application directly using your Zwing frame. This allows you to interact with the Vadin view exactly as it were uh, inside a normal Zwing panel. This is very useful because it allows you to quickly solve all uh, interaction problem your panel may have while it's being put inside a Swing application that a normal embedded browser just cannot give you. So in this way, um, while you migrate your application, you don't have to create two branches, which is usually what is done moving to a new technology and keep replicating all the features on all two branches for a long time. Uh, but it allows you to actually replace view by view into Vadin and put them inside your main code base and proceed by that after you assess that your application is working as expected. This is a quick example on how it's done. So we have uh, a Zwing frame. Uh, a Zwing frame usually contains a Zwing panel and a Zwing panel as a set of Zwing components. As we can see, a Vadin server has a similar structure. So we have a Vadin view and then we have a set of Vadin components. Uh, this is very um, intuitive for a Zwing developer to understand how it's structured. And the Zwing Kit panel is, um, uh, we can say, wrapping, in a sense, the embedded browser. The embedded browser is containing the Vadin view, and the Zwing Kit allows you to interact uh, with the Vadin view inside your Zwing frame. So um, 
let me show you a quick demo so you can understand uh, how this uh, could uh, be used in a real life scenario. It looks like we have a question from the yes. chat. So Dion asked, can you give me this slide? Uh, yes, we can share this slide with you. Go ahead, Daniela. Perfect. So I'm going to stop sharing this, uh, this slide for a moment and I'm going to switch to my screen. It's a good pause to drink some more coffee. <laughs> All right, so um, this is a, an example. It's a very quick example and small example, but it gives you the idea of a possible uh, migration. So uh, here on the left, we have a Swing application. The Swing application contains two panels. Uh, the first panel is a grid that lists all the people uh, that, you, uh, that are uh, available in your application. And when you switch uh, element, the element gets loaded inside a second panel uh, which contains the details and maybe can allow you to edit the data or cancel the data or do anything uh, you wish to do with uh, this information. So the VADIN application that is being migrated uh, would look like the one on, on the right. So the one on the right has, a, has the same table and has the same behavior. So when I switch, I can load the data inside my panel. So uh, assuming that this um, process can be replicated um, in a real scenario, so we can have many views and many things to migrate, uh, the, whole the whole conversion can take a lot of time. So we want to focus on our use cases uh, scenario. So here we have two use cases. The first use case is to browse the people. So I just want to see uh, what are the, which is the data and just browse my table. And the second use case is to edit, so using the second panel. So what we do is that we focus only on the, on the first use case, which is browse the information, and we create uh, a conversion on only, uh, we migrate only the first panel. So the first panel has been migrated, and now it contains the same data as it were before, uh, but it's only uh, the single panel. Then using the Swing Kit, we can do this. Uh, let me give you the, the right frame. Yes, this one. So this frame uh, shows that you can uh, open the same view inside your Swing application. When you move around the data, and the Swing Kit is able to handle the event coming from Valdin that an element has been changed inside the table as it was doing inside your uh, previous uh, implementation. And this allows you to uh, have only one single part of the application migrated. Your whole application is going to still work because it's going to have a VADIN view embedded, uh, but the Swing Kit allows you to integrate it in, uh, with the other panels you still have uh, in, uh, in Swing. So um, as you can see, the, the look and feel changes. Uh, in this example, I, I use the header column a little smaller in the Swing application. In your Vadin application, you can actually change the look and feel uh, based on which is, go which, uh, is uh, the uh, system that is going to render your view. So if your view is going to be rendered in Swing, um, the header column is, is smaller, and you can apply many different uh, uh, CSS scenarios or uh, themes so that your application can look like it was uh, Swing, so your user will not feel confused. Uh, the same concept can be applied uh, with the second panel. So if we convert the second pa panel in this use case, we gonna, we, we're going to convert the second panel and we're going to put the second panel inside our Swing application. As you can see, in this, uh, in this second uh, use case, the, uh, is, the va is the Swing application that has the event. So it's a Swing panel that is changing the information and is Swing that is uh, using uh, VADIN directly to set the data inside our panel. So we have uh, the both use cases here. So in, in this case, which is the first one, when we make it to the table, is VADIN that is generating the event. And the second use case is Swing that is generating the event. The Swing Kit allows you to, for example, uh, get exceptions or uh, do many things that uh, you can uh, do while using normal J panels uh, in Swing. So after we migrated both of the panels in Swing, uh, in Vadin, 
sorry, we, we are going to have this final um, uh, frame, which contains both of the panel in VADIN. At this point, we only need to migrate a whole container to get the final version. So we are just going to create um, a container, which, for example, in your case, can be a navigation menu or uh, some tools around uh, your main panels. And, and your uh, conversion uh, is completed. So this was the demo. This demo is actually available uh, for uh, the trials of the Swing Kit. So you will get exactly this, uh, this implementation to try out uh, when you want to try the Swing Kit. Let me stop sharing. Thank you, Daniel. And I'll share my screen again for a bit. And there we go. So as to recap what Ben and Daniel already said, we have the volume flow open source framework uh, where you can keep building web applications 100% in Java. So you can go to one.com slash flow if you want to check it out. And also we have our uh, Swing modernization and migration services, um, which you can find on our migrate from Swing page on one.com. And if you ever decide to enlist any of our services or to try out the Swing kit, uh, chances are you'll be working with Daniela or Ben directly. Also on that page, you can request a trial uh, for the Swing Kit, as previously mentioned. So let's take a look at some questions we had in the chat. So we had one question from Mahmoud asking, what license of Vardin should we have to use for Swing Kit? Is it pro or greater? Uh, so the answer is greater. The Swing Kit is at the moment included in the Vardin Ultimate subscription. But if you have a Prime or Enterprise subscription, you can buy the Swing Kit on top of that sub subscription as well. If you're interested in a trial, then that's, then that's free. And then we have another question from Mahmoud. Is there a Java version mandatory to use the Swing Kit, or could we use Java 8? Yes, I can take this answer. Thank so, um, so uh, well, the Swing Kit has actually two, uh, two dependencies. One is for your Vadin application, and one is, is for your Swing application. So you will need to have both uh, of um, you need to use the Swing Kit in both of your application while they coexist. So on on the server side on Vadin, um, the, uh, the the version is the same as Vadin as requirement. So it's from Java 11 onwards. While um, on 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 the Swing part, uh, at the moment we only support Java 11 and Java 17, even though uh, we have some plans about it and we consider it a possibility. Uh, to have Java 8 supported in the future. And then we have another question from Boris asking, what kind of web view does the Swing Kit use? Is it embedded Chrome? Um, so the Swing Kit uh, is not, um, do not have a specific requirement on which implementation um, of um, embedded browser uh, it, it, it can use. So as default, uh, we suggest to use um, JSF, which is an open source library, and it uh, embeds um, a Chromium instance uh, in your Swing application. Uh, but potentially, it can be it can support any other some other um, implementation of embedded browsers uh, if needed. And we have another question, or maybe a comment rather, about using Vardin fourteen. So is the Swing Kit compatible with Vardin 14? Um, no, the Swing Kit requires a minimum version of Vardin 23 uh, at the moment. Uh, even if, um, like for Java 8 on, on Swing part, we are considering uh, to enhance our scope of support uh, technologies. OK, let's wait a bit more if any more questions show up. I think we have answered all of them. We've got to thank you. So I think I think that's it for this webinar session. Um, thank you very much. And if any questions pop up, don't hesitate to go to our web page and just contact us, send us a message, and we'll make sure to answer any more questions that you may have. So uh, thank you, Daniela. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, everyone who participated. And uh, I hope to see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Lovely. Cheers. Bye-bye.